So we all suffer from well, creative kryptonite. We all have our creative strengths and weaknesses. We all have areas where we need a bit more help. Let's just talk about the three elements and let's look at, at action, connection, deviation in, in, uh, separately. So the question about, about action, do you have any action issues? Are there anything, is there anything that, uh, that prevents you from, from getting things started? Are there any particular barriers that, that uh, do you feel distracted? Do you procrastinate often? Do you have a hard time actually finishing something that you start? Do you have tons of ideas, but very, very little production of those ideas? Those are problems that have to do with not being able to get into, into action. Then we've got connection issues. Here, we, um, do, you, do you hate doing research? Or do you find it difficult to, to connect ideas? Do you have little patience for other ideas or other cultures? Do you never read the manual? You just dive right in and, and get started. Do you shoot first and, and ask questions later? There's nothing wrong with these things. It's just that it might be a slight weakness Deviation as well. This is this whole concept of originality. Do you, do you have difficulty just expressing yourself or finding your unique voice? Do you feel like you're always copying someone else? Do you avoid trying new things because you're intimidated or because you're, you're slightly scared or afraid of, of what might happen? Do you have a hard time staring at a blank sheet of paper? Does it terrify you? Or you don't know how to imagine a new perspective on things? If, if that's the case, you might have a weakness in the area of deviation, of, of originality. And again, that's okay, because we can get there. So the creative types, and I'm going to just give you a couple examples of these in a minute, but the creative types basically consist of consumers. A consumer is someone that is weak in all areas, and perhaps they love it that way. Perhaps they actually just like to, uh, to watch television and, and absorb things and take things in. And, and they're not interested in making things and making things happen. They don't have this, this drive to, to create. And that's fine. We need people like that to, to buy things. Um, and then we've got the people that, are, that we consider to be the creative geniuses. They're the ones that, that are have everything in, in balance. And then there's a bunch of spaces in between where you, you may have a, a certain weakness in two areas, such as the mimic, the empath, and the crazy, or you might have weaknesses in just one area. So I'm going to just get into those uh, one by one. So we talked about the consumer. This is someone that's weak on action, connection, and deviation, is very happy to receive and not to give. And that, again, that's fine. Uh, but they need, if they want to move forward, if they want to become more creative, if they suddenly sit up and go, damn, I want to make something happen. How do I go about doing that? Well, they need to consider strengthening all three, and that's going to be a bit of work, but it needs practice. They need to practice. They need to start thinking of how ideas fit together in association, and they need to experiment, and that'll allow them to move forward. The first one... Of, of, the, uh, of the eight, or the second one, I should say, is the empath. And you could also call this the student. You could call this the person that lives inside their head. This is someone that, that understands how things work, that understands how elements relate to each other, but doesn't have a lot of experience, doesn't have a lot of practice in the real world, hasn't actually applied their ideas and is also someone that, that is absorbing so much that already exists and hasn't quite yet thought about how to use it and how to deviate from it and how to create something new or something original. The mimic is someone that's very strong on action, that just gets out there and does stuff. But they're, if they're weak on connection, they're weak on deviation, they need more association, they need more experimentation. This is somebody that that can, that can do just about anything, has a really strong talent for their craft, but they haven't developed it inwardly, they haven't thought about, about how to share it with the world yet or how to express themselves fully. Then you've got the crazy, and I love these people. 
Um, they are often fresh out of school, uh, in advertising anyway, and they, they come into uh, a creative group and a brainstorming session, and man, they've just, they've just got all kinds of ideas, just crazy concepts. Oh, we could do this, and we could do this, and we could do this. Well, that doesn't really relate to the project that we're working on, but it's a cool idea. Um, do you know how we would actually get that done? Oh, I have no idea, I have no idea. Okay, that's good. I mean, this is, this is tons of energy, and it just needs to be channeled, so we need to spend more time practicing. We need to spend more time figuring out how the elements relate to one another. So the crazy is, uh, is, is a great person to, ha to actually hang out with. It can be a little tiring, too, but that's good. And so then we get into the next set of three, which are the people that uh, only have one weakness. The dreamer is an example of someone that, that's very strong on understanding how things fit together, that understands how to express themselves, but they have this extraordinary difficulty getting things started. They haven't practiced enough. They haven't gotten through those barriers of, of procrastination, or they might just simply doubt themselves, but they just can't seem to get anything done. They have tons of great, fantastic ideas that they know the world would be ready for, but they just haven't gotten down to, to writing them or, or creating them. The outsider is someone that's really strong on experience. They have a lot of experience. They have a lot of original ideas. They know how to express themselves, but nobody can relate to them. They don't know how to associate their ideas to other people, to culture, to make the ideas make sense to other people. They make sense to them. There's a considerable number of, of outsider artists uh, and musicians out there celebrated in museums and, and theaters. Uh, but it's, uh, it, can be a, it can be a bit of a lonely place for, for a creative person, um, but they just need to figure out how to make that connection. And it doesn't have to be extreme. It doesn't have to be the Wesley Willis's of, of the world or the Henry Darger's of the world who, who live basically in isolation. Henry Darger, for those of you who don't know, was a man who um, they, they only found out about his work after he died. He was a janitor. He lived in a small apartment in, uh, in New York, I think. And he wrote a, like the longest fantasy series on the planet of, of these young girls fighting in a, in a war. Uh, he had illustrations. It was over 8,000 pages long, and he never showed it to a single person. And then you've got producers, and these people are great to have around when you want to get things done really strong on experience, totally get it, completely understand how this is going to work, how this is going to fit with other people. They're not necessarily the most original. Maybe they don't care to be. If they want to be, uh, it just means that they need to take their experience and start to experiment more. So producers are great. And then we've got creators. And these are, again, the people that we talk about as uh, we enviously see them as having everything together and have this balance um, they know how to make things, they know how to connect things, they know how to be original. And you can take different paths to becoming a creative genius, if that's what you want to do. You can definitely feel free stopping wherever you wish. But uh, one of them is, is the action path. This is where you start with learning and experience, learning a craft, experiencing it, then get to a place of understanding, and then finally be able to express yourself. And an example of this, arguably, would be Andy Warhol, where he started out as, uh, as someone that, that mimicked other people's ideas, that, that copied things. He, he painted soup cans. He, he, he did uh, reprints. So he was, he was doing the action and making things. I mean, he called his place the factory. And then he started figuring out how these ideas actually connected to other people. He started to sell his, his art, become very successful to help other people, uh, and then eventually became considered a genius when he started to, to present these things in more original ways. So it, it's, it's an example of, of a possible path. How do you like those flash bulbs? That was uh, it's done on an iPad. That's crazy. 
Uh, so then there's another path, the connection path. This is where you go through the empath, understanding, then you get into expression, and then into experience. And I think an example of this would be someone like Albert Einstein, someone that, uh, that first started off thinking about things in terms of understanding them, getting a really strong grasp of how things work and how things fit together, then started conceiving those things in very original ways. And I don't know if you've read a lot about Einstein, but he did what he called thought experiments inside his own head, where he considered how things could work in different ways that nobody had considered before. And then, and only then, he went into the act of actually trying to prove these things. And some of the things he didn't ever prove in his lifetime and have only been subsequently proven uh, after his death. So that's one, that's one path. And then we have the deviation path. Now this one's interesting. When you start out as a crazy, just expressing yourself and then getting into uh, building up an experience and then finding out how to connect. And I think that a really great example of somebody that's taken the path of deviation is Wiley Coyote. Uh, Wiley Coyote is someone that just has these insane ideas absolutely insane ideas, uh, all kinds of, of crazy ideas, has absolutely no conception of how these things are going to affect him and doesn't seem to even care. Um, and then, of course, he gets into the action of making these things and, unfortunately, not really learning from the act of making these things and continuously crashing uh, and burning. But eventually, he at least considers himself a genius, which is, which is fantastic. I think that he'll, he'll get there someday. He'll catch that roadrunner. So the creative paths exist. You can move from consumer to creator in a number of different ways. So depending on where you are in the spectrum or where you think you are in the spectrum, there is a way to get to this creative genius again if, if you so choose. So action is about practicing and practicing and gaining experience. And connection is about making associations to come up with an understanding of how things work. And deviation is about experimenting and trying new things and then figuring out how you can actually express yourself in an original manner. That's it. That's, those, are, those are the creative elements. Now, when we look at this, what do we want to strengthen what do we need practice on? What, do we, what can we use as a tool? I look at, at, the, uh, I look at it as, as creative toolkits in these different areas. So how can I create more? What, is, what can I put into my action toolkit if I have some issues with doing, uh, with ideation or with quantity? So the question is, what, what's stopping you? If you need to be stronger in action, what is actually stopping you? It's, it's a barrier. It's a barrier of some sort. And that barrier could be time. That barrier could simply be distraction. That's one of the biggest ones for me. I come home and, um, and I look at, there's some amazing TV programs on and I need to watch them. I need to watch uh, Game of Thrones instead of actually working on my presentation. Fear. Fear is a, is a great one. It's just, I, I, I'm terrified that I'm going to be successful, or I'm terrified that I'm going to fail. I'm just scared of staring at a blank sheet of paper. It's intimidating. And then procrastination is huge. Procrastination is, is, a, is a huge problem for a lot of people where they just feel like they can never get started. So how do we do with that? Well, there's picks and there's dynamite. And these are the two things that you can put into your creative toolkit to deal with the inability to act. The, the picks are, are more of a, a slow way in. Dynamite is a fast way in. Picks, you think of as being something that you can apply long-term. Dynamite more as a quick fix. 